So we just got confirmation that a very exciting, fancy new headphone measurement rig is going to be here soon. It's a Christmas miracle, and this means we need a new headphone reference target. But wait, what about Maharman? Where are Maharman's at? Yeah, that's fucking stupid. Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com, and today we're talking about what the new fancy measurement system means, as we've all been patiently waiting for the new b and 5128 and compatible test rigs to ship for some time. And now they finally have. And yes, that means the headphone measurements you're used to from us, from our good friend Critical, and a number of other headphone review platforms are about to change. If you are new to headphone measurements, I am truly sorry for what's about to be inflicted upon you. What we've come to expect from visual representations of frequency response, what we think is normal or even good, is all about to change. The bottom line is that headphone measurement nerds like us are at a major crossroads with the new measurement equipment, and the well-established Harman standard is effectively dead. F to pay respects. Okay, not technically, because I imagine there will still be a number of Gross 711 couplers and old measurement rigs being used in the wild, and that stuff is still useful, as is the back catalog of measurements done with those older Gross systems, including the ones that we've done. We've used the Gross for years. But for those of us jumping to the new standard with the new b &K 5128, all need a new target to work with. And effectively, a headphone measurements Wild West is about to be unleashed, but maybe it doesn't have to be. So hear me out on this one. So up until now, we've been using a version of the Harman target as our frequency response headphone reference target. And in fact, the majority of headphone reviewers using Gross systems like this one here have been doing the same, including Critical, Amir over at ASR, Brent at Soundstage, and likely many others. And the reason for this is that the research that's been done with this specific coupler and ear is excellent. So the research that's been done with this measurement system and compatible rigs. And for those who haven't had a chance to read through the Harman research, I encourage you to do so. You will learn things. Even if you think you know about it, you will learn things, I promise. So do it. But here's the thing with measurement rigs. They different from one another. And the targets we use on them also need to reflect that difference. Let's consider the differences that exist among the Gross systems, from the B&K systems, from the head acoustic systems. If you measured the same speaker, the result would be different on each of them. But there's nothing different about that speaker, and the conditions that the speaker are in is the same. You just have a different result depending on the measurement system. And the same is true for headphones. So we cannot use the Harman target for the B&K 5128 and other high-res ear simulators. And so if you're gonna take something away from this, know that the Harman target is only applicable to gross rigs like this one here. And of course, the BNK5128 is a better representation of an actual human than these gross systems are. And so we want to make use of its more human-like qualities. That's a little bit creepy if you think about it. Or in other words, trying to force the new measurement system into a framework that the headphone enthusiast community is familiar with doesn't make much sense, and you folks are just gonna have to be okay with that. But there's a potential solution to this problem, and it's going to influence what we do for our headphone target moving forward. That solution is to rely on what's called diffuse field. Now, you may have heard about this before, but just, just stop. There's a twist, so stick with me. Let's quickly just talk about what diffuse field is and how it helps us with this problem. A diffuse field is where the sound is coming from all directions, so the sound energy is evenly distributed. A diffuse field head-related transfer function, or DFHRTF for short, is the frequency response of an ear in a diffuse field. This response is different for every head and can also be measured on any head, even yours. And if you're wondering how this relates to Harman, you can see from this image that the Harman in-room baseline, before the application of the preference filters, matches the DFHRTF of the ear being used with the same level of smoothing, fairly closely. And this is technically still the international standard for headphones. So here's the cool thing about diffuse field compensation and why that helps us. It effectively allows us to compare headphone measurements on different measurement rigs and it matches in-room flat sounding speakers. And you might be wondering, why haven't we used this up until now? What's the downside of diffuse field? Well, unfortunately, it's that people don't really like the way that it sounds, at least not the majority of listeners. And this has been demonstrated by the Harman research. Instead, the majority of listeners prefer speakers that measure with a downward slope or tilt by around 6 to 12 dB across the audio band. And Harman also demonstrated that this slope is similarly preferred for speakers as it is for headphones. So how do we gain both the scalability benefits, you know, the cross compatibility of diffuse field that I just mentioned, and a result that people actually like in both headphones and speakers? Well, it turns out that there's a solution, our new target. 
here's the concept that we're proposing for a new headphone reference target. And I just want to be clear that we don't have a final version of this yet as of this filming this right now. It's still a work in progress, but I want to give you a sense of it and the thought process behind it. What we're aiming to do is use a diffuse field HRTF baseline that you can compare across different measurement systems like the Gross here and the new 5128 and can even be applied to measurements made in real human ears with in-ear microphones. So we're starting with diffuse field for the scalability benefits that I mentioned. But because we know diffuse field isn't preferred by most people, we're applying the Harman downward tilting slope to it. This means we're incorporating the Harman research that demonstrates listeners prefer headphones with a downward tilting slope, or I guess you would see it this way, the slope that matches what people liked in speakers as well. So before you think, but wait, DF is too bright. No, we're not doing just straight up DF. I hear your concerns. Instead, think of this idea kind of like a DF target that applies the outcomes of the Harman research to make it more appropriate for most listeners. So it includes the fact that people prefer a certain amount of extra bass, for example. Now, this also has a couple of other benefits. It means that our target can be more high res than the one half octave smoothing of the Harman target, which is super interesting, especially with the new 5128 system. And it's also backwards compatible with just flat diffuse field if people want that. But if all of this sounds super confusing, more will be revealed soon. Most importantly, it should be closer to what people actually perceive. And when you're looking at one of our graphs, whether done on the 5128 or the Gross, it will be more likely to predict how the headphone is going to sound to you than ever before. That's the goal. So make sure you're subscribed for when we release our official reference curve and for more videos like this one, since we'll be doing a lot more deep dives on the topic of headphone measurements and evaluative theory once we get the new 5128 system in, which should hopefully arrive soon. But I'm sure that's enough of me for today, so I will leave it at that. As usual, if you guys are interested in learning more about headphones, if you want to read product reviews or just learn more about audio related stuff in general, check out the audio files up on headphones.com. Make sure you check out our forum and join us on Discord. That's also linked in the description. If you guys you know, want to chat with me about stuff, that's where I will be participating and you can come hang out with all the rest of us headphone show folks and audio nerds. Anyways, that does it for me and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.